All right, I am here at work currently, and I uh, figured this would be as good a time as any to kind of do this video that folks were asking for about um, identifying river cane versus bamboo. So I use river cane for a lot of my arrows if they're not made from uh, wood shafts. Uh, one of my favorite kind of local, I say local, but it is an invasive um, for arrow material. Uh, I like to use it because it is an invasive. Um, kill it, cut it down, use what I can for arrow shafts. This is privet. Um, you look at the uh, the leaves here, um, kind of those um, those uh, clusters of leaves like that. Uh, very dense wood, kind of like holly, very white and light colored, um, but makes pretty good makes pretty good shafts. Uh, decent magnolia here, and then some fruit trees out in this little clearing. But look at all of this along here. That is all bamboo, and I'm going to show you how you can tell it's bamboo at a distance without having to go up and inspect it. Just at a glance. Uh, some of the kind of key characteristics and features of bamboo versus river cane. I'll show you some river cane too, uh, but this is the easy stuff. This is the stuff to start with. First of all, see how bushy it is? Look at how dense the foliage is on and green, dense and green. That's the big thing that you're going to look for when identifying river cane versus bamboo um, because river cane looks often somewhat dry. You'll, find, you'll see dry leaves, you'll see tan all over it, right? And it's not this big. So this is a small little patch. Let's walk over here to where the main body of this is because it, of course, is a rhizome. It's a root system that just pops up more foliage um, the, more it, the more it goes. Take a look at this. Look at what I'm looking at here. Look at all of this bamboo. It's nuts. This stuff is so prolific and so invasive. Um, and so when we look at, again, dense green foliage, smaller leaves, right? So you look at the leaves on this mature bamboo is the same size as the leaves on uh, river cane, but on smaller bamboo, the leaves are very small and close together. Um, you'll also notice that there are no sheaths on um, these stalks. So you look at these stalks here. There are no sheaths, and look how big around these are. Another key feature of bamboo versus river cane um, is on sort of cane-sized uh, pieces of bamboo, like this one here. Take a look at this, this piece of, of bamboo. Notice that it's got very pronounced places where the branches come off and flat spots on one side of the nodes. So you'll see on this piece here, see that flat spot? Flat spot. River cane doesn't have quite a pronounced of a flat spot. Um, and it has a sheath that covers the stalk for the most part. Um, and so it grows in these huge, I mean just huge uh, patches and just chokes out uh, the native river cane. So, this is, this is a very easily identifiable plant, uh, and uh, you'll see up back here, just behind it, just behind this, there is some river cane on the other side of these railroad tracks that this is kind of bordering, um, and you can just see the very tops of some of this dry stuff. That's river cane, and um, I'm going to walk over there and show you what that looks like. But first I want to look at this apricot tree and see if there's any fruit on here. <laughs> I'm at work, uh, of course, so I'm uh, in my kit. Um, got leggings, moccasins, breech clout. Um, I was doing a photo shoot for National Geographic this morning, um, and uh, you'll be able to see that, of course, on the National Geographic Instagram, the uh, In the Field uh, National Geographic, the National Geographic official, and then, of course, uh, maybe in their print, um, their print as well. So check me out. Uh, take a look for that. I don't know if you're a National Geographic subscriber, but um, you can find me there. And I told Katekanethi, we got a little rabbit running around over there. So many folks don't hunt rabbits. Uh, uh rabbits, they are uh, important to us. Um, they're part of our medicine, so uh, we don't... We don't hunt them, but there's another invasive plant right here. 
this is uh, what's called a tree of heaven, and it is anything but. It's stinky, um, you know, it's real pithy, and uh, you see it's just brittle and weak, but it grows like crazy. But I'm going to pause this, walk across the street, and uh, show you some uh, river cane. Okay, so here we are um, at a patch of river cane that I cut some of my arrow shafts from. Um, I'm going to have to be careful right now because uh, I smell copperheads. Uh, there is some standing water and uh, I know these copperheads love this river cane. So I do have to be careful, uh, especially wearing <laughs> traditional clothes, wearing uh, uh, breech clout and leggings and moccasins because they'll just bite right through it. So this is, this is river cane. This is what you're looking for. This is the larger variety of cane, right? So check out how big these leaves are, right? Uh, you can see that right now it's also a fairly dense green, but look at how dry the cane looks. See how the cane is sheathed? So you notice on the cane itself, look at this. And underneath is that green. This is about the size that I want for my arrows, but you don't want to get the ones with the full sheaths on them. That means they're not mature. Uh, the cane isn't dense yet. So it's still growing in height. You can make arrows from it, you know, but they're not going to be as good as uh, arrows made from uh, mature, mature cane. So I'll kind of show you what that mature cane looks like, and it'll come in a variety of sizes. Um, the small, small stuff won't be the only, uh, the only cane you can use for arrows. Of course, uh, you know, like if you're, uh, ooh, smells kind of strong. Uh, if you're uh, an ad person or that kind of thing, this is the species of cane that you might be looking for as well. But all here is good arrow material. And a lot of this is good arrow material because it gets mowed down uh, and then it grows back. And it grows back thicker than it did before. It grows back better than it did before. Uh, so, because it's putting up smaller shoots, you can see like, it's all watery. But there, where it's been all cut down. Look at the nice stalks that are coming up from that. Like a lot of arrow material, traditionally, river cane is oftentimes cut through. And then on the paths that we cut, walking through there, cutting paths, you'll actually be building perfect arrow material for that to come up, nice straight shoot um, for it to, to mature. I see all this back here in the back, farther up that way, that's mature cane. See, it doesn't have any sheaths on it. Let's see if we can zoom in here. Yeah, we can. Well, here. Okay, I tried to zoom in. It's not working. Nope. So it's not going to work, but I'm just kind of set at its depth right now. Um, that is mature cane, and it is nice and round. There's no sheath on it, um, you know, and uh, it is good to go for making arrows. I'm going to see if I can get over there. <sighs> yeah, I can get over here. So here, you can see this piece of cane still got its sheath, but it's starting to come off, which means it's getting close to maturity. I would still use it. I could still harvest it. See these pieces here? They're nice and large, solid green, no sheath. Right? Those are mature pieces of cane. Those are great for fishing spears. Those are great for adlatl darts. Um, you know, which no native people that I uh, ever grew up with were using anymore. I know some native folks out in the west um, that still use very similar things, but uh, not down in Oklahoma where I'm from, other than as a hobby, you know. Um, uh, it's a broken tradition. Unlike our bows, an adlatl is a broken tradition, and it, it is in the which you consider like revitalization, um, but as more of a hobby, right? So uh, our bows never went away. They never died. They don't need to be revitalized because they're still alive. That cane is perfect for blowguns, which are also still alive in a lot of communities, um, and uh, fishing spears and gigs and things like that. Um, perfect, perfect stuff right there. That is golden. I love this patch of cane because for about the last four years, it has produced most of my arrows. 
that are made out of cane. I've also got a couple of um, patches of the smaller variety of cane, switch cane, um, around that I have begun to use because I like it actually better than this variety for making arrows. It's more consistent. It's easier to work with. Um, it's perfect diameter for me. I like smaller diameter shafts. Um, I just make an insert for the for the knock, you know. Um, so very very cool stuff. I love river cane and I love working with it, making pipe stems, um, make little drinking straws out of it. You can do all kinds of stuff. But that's what you're looking for. Big things to keep in mind. Sheath on the stock. You want the you want the stock to have a sheath on it. Um, you know. Uh, you want to be able to see some tan in there as well. If you walk up and it's all of a similar diameter, um, you know, and it's all uh, kind of, let me get over here a little bit. It's all sort of of a similar diameter. Um, you know, it's not very large or very thick. Um, there we go. Not very large, not very thick. Um, and, uh, Kind of about the size of your thumb is about the biggest it gets. That's river cane, and that's that's perfect. That's what you're looking for. If it's big around, if it's huge, tall, big, fluffy up top, um, kind of looks like it's stacked in its foliage, that is bamboo, and that is not what you're looking for. Now, golden bamboo is a really tricky one because it is small in diameter. Uh, it doesn't have a sheath, um, but it is smaller in diameter. It's perfectly round, uh, and it, it's easily confused for cane if you don't know what you're looking for. Um, but it's a lot harder to find as well. But the two species of cane, uh, I think it's Arundinaria gigantia and um, the smaller variety, like switch cane, that's what you want. That's what you're looking for. And you can Google those and find images of those as well. But I just wanted to put up a little quick video because I know someone asked for it about how I identify uh, those, how I know I'm not getting bamboo versus river cane. So I hope this helps somebody and I, I thank you for the question. Keep them coming. Yahweh.